Hello, this is Big Boss Rescue Chief of Humane Emergency Animal Rescue. Welcome to our series, Animal Rescue Postmortem, where we analyze the good, the bad, and the ugly of animal rescues throughout the world. Welcome back. This is Volume 6, Number 10. We're going to go in on a subject that I've been putting off but I've had some videos come to my attention and people are asking me what I think about it and what is my reaction to it and so um, let me share you a little bit about my experience I've been shooting since 1974 I grew up in a, a family that had firearms and promoted the Second Amendment I carry a firearm I've got one right here on my side as I'm making this video I've carried a firearm for uh, self-protection since 1982. I'm a firm supporter of the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution. I believe in self-defense. I've also been a range safety officer, and I've been going to ranges, like I said, since 1974. I have experience. I have a lot of experience at working with dogs, aggressive dogs where all I used was my catch pole, okay? Against dogs that have torn people's legs open, ripped their fingers off, very aggressive dogs, okay? So let's get into this video here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the four, uh, let me put my glasses on, sorry about the reflection. The four universal gun safety rules are the following. This is what anybody who's a, a teach, an instructor is going to teach you this. Anybody who cares about somebody else that's going to pick up a firearm is going to teach you at least these four things because they are some of the most important things that you could ever learn when you put a firearm in your hand. Okay? First, treat all guns as if they are loaded. Second, never let the muzzle, that's the tip of the barrel where the bolts come out, if you're not familiar with that, okay? Never let the muzzle point at anything you're not willing to destroy. At the end of that, I think it should say, and kill, or or kill, because that's the potential of that firearm. Keep your finger off the tri trigger until your sights are on target and you've made a decision to shoot. So your finger's not in the uh, inside the trigger guard or on the trigger until you have that firearm aimed you're on target and you know for sure that you're going to shoot okay all we're going to, the, the, you'll see the, the point while i'm trying to make here always be sure of your target and what's behind it this is one of the most important parts of that let's run down to number four here real quick this is another rule number four be sure of your target and what's what is behind it this is another rule that applies to recreational shooting and defensive, this is key to this video here, defensive situations. You might have also heard, always know your backstop. I'm going to go down just below here for a second. In self-defense situations, this rule can be more difficult to assess and follow on the fly. It's important to identify your target, be sure you want to take a shot, and know what lies behind your target. Even if you hit your target, an over-penetrating bullet may hit something you don't intend to shoot. Ensure, always ensure, that there are no innocent bystanders behind or in front of your target. Okay, so if you're not sure what they're talking about, here's our target, here's our target in this photograph here. So, we don't want anyone or anything in front of it that we don't want to shoot. We don't want anything behind it. And this is our backstop here. You can see this berm of earth here. That's where that bullet's going to end up when it passes through this target. And we have to make sure when we, when we release a round from that firearm that we have to know if it goes all the way through what we're shooting, be it human or animal, that there's not something, someone behind that that we don't want to shoot because we're liable for that. Okay, now let's get into the disturbing video here that's just unbelievable here. Uh, I've got the, I think I've got the sound turned down. Okay, I got the sound turned down. Okay, we've got a dog doing what most dogs do. 
when they see somebody new coming into the area where the pack is, they run over, plus these are labs, these are yellow labs. So it's a friendly dog, it is not showing, it's showing zero signs of aggression. Okay? So this police officer just threatened to kill that dog. Here's another dog that runs over, he shoots it twice, and then as it's running away, he keeps shooting it. And look how this idiot is holding his gun. L watch this. And police officers, if you do this, you're a stupid idiot and a coward. And I'm going to make a video about you. Look at how he's holding that gun. So, oh, I guess I can't just click on there and it will pause. Here we go. Look at this. Okay, here's a car back here that doesn't look like it's parked. Now, this officer has just flagged what we call flagging people. That means pointing a loaded gun at, at, in your direction. That is unacceptable to do that. And it looks like to me where this pointer is, and I know it's a stupid tiny dot with these videos here, is that I think I see the officer's finger inside the trigger guard. He's not, he's not got it aimed at anything in particular and he's not using his sights. So, that's rule number three that the guy's violating. Let's go back to the beginning here. Oh, these warnings. Okay, there's that. This guy's such a stupid idiot that I, I mean, I, I can't even, all right, right here. As soon as he pulls that up, and we're going to see a video into the future right here on what happens when you're really not doing what you should be doing with the firearm here. And what happens in the backstop when there are human beings there. We have human beings here. We don't know if there are children or if there's nobody inside this vehicle. He's pointing. He may be aiming down, but it could be ricochet. He could trip, fall backwards, lift the gun up, do any, any kind of thing here. Now you have homes and people in the background here. We're certain there are people over here. There may be people in the house, and there could definitely be somebody in the car. What happened to this officer's backstop? If this guy is so totally afraid, this, this is a disgusting human being in my opinion. And I've dealt with some super aggressive dogs, fighting dogs, that that people used to fight and kill other dogs with and then and then boy don't come to my house and shoot my dog you're gonna have a much different response than these people did from me police <laughs> don't come over here and do that and then try to keep me away from rendering aid to my dog he goes over here and he won't let these people render aid to the dog this is one of the most disgusting people. I hope people are still... Look, he's waving her off. He won't let her go render aid to the dog. You wouldn't stop me. Police officer, you're not going to stop me from rendering aid to my dog. I guarantee you're not going to do that to me. Here's the dog. Dying. And this and this prick here, listen to him. Oh my God! We're <laughs> What's doing I want your name. I want your badge. Everything. Oh my God. Yeah, and listen to his crappy, atti uh, smirky attitude. Hey, police officers, people are getting tired of this kind of behavior from you. And I know I've got to work with police officers here on our emergency rescue service, but I don't care if I piss you off. If this is you, I don't even want to see you out on the street. I don't want to deal with you. Th this, this kind of crappy behavior here. So, uh, this video just goes on and on here. All right, let's go back. Let's go back a, a minute. Let's shrink this down here. So, what did we see? Always treat the gun if it's loaded. He knows his gun's loaded. That's why he's carrying it. So he knows that. Never let the muzzle point at anything you're not willing to destroy. We saw a complete. Where's the video at? Did I close it? No, there it is. Okay. I thought I was looking at something else. So we see that all the way over here. Right there. Watch. Look at this. All this guy had to do is get back in his car. 
If he's scared of dogs, hey, police officers, if you're scared of dogs, uh, get in your car, drive back to the station, quit your job, and go to work for a fast food place. Because that's what you're cut out for. This is disgusting. And I don't want to hear anything from the bootlickers or the police come over here, the apologist. Just shut up about it. I know more about it than you do. I've been doing it for a long time. I, this just... I can't tell you how much this pisses me off and that how I think of this police officer as one of the most useless people on the planet. This is absolutely disgusting. Look at that. And then he's yelling at these people. So the dog dies. It probably wasn't going to live. And he won't let them render aid to it. What kind of person is that? Well, I hope... And I'm not directing you to do that. All I can do is hope that people are still con continuously on that police department's Facebook. On um, They're calling them on the phone regularly. And just never let them forget about this. And then I, I'm always of the opinion that if you see this person, if you know who this is, don't you have a right here in the United States to tell them what a piece of crap that you think they are? I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying, you know. So anyway, there are, are going to be two more videos in this Animal Rescue Postmortem Volume 6 that show this here. They're going to be released later on. But I just wanted to get the ball rolling with this one here. Because this is out of control. If he was scared, he should have tucked his tail between his legs like a good submissive puppy will do and get back in his car and leave because this kind of behavior is inexcusable go to our website sign up for our email newsletter don't worry we'll never spam you or sell your email address if you want to make a donation go to our website make a donation straight there let me take this off uh, and then if you want to contact us, use the contact form there on the website. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. If you like the content that you're seeing here, keep generating uh, more by liking the video, share the video on your social media, uh, interact with it. That's what really helps build the YouTube channel and uh, support our mission. Leave a comment down below. And then also, if you have video content that you'd like to see a reaction to, remember that the focus of these videos here is education. It's trying to make people, uh, help people that are out in, in animal welfare here become better at what they're doing. So we, we look at the mistakes people make, like this person here, that sometimes are inexcusable mistakes here. All right? But that's what the whole point of these videos are, is, is to, to post-mortem. That's why I have the, the, the definition of post-mortem at the beginning of the video. It's to learn from it and make things better. But as long as you let people like that on the streets, we're all in danger from a person like that. Because that person's unstable, according to me, in my opinion. Alright, I can't tell you how much we love you. Because you keep sending us love and support. How can I how can I not love you back, right? Okay. That's it for this video. Watch for the other ones cuz there are two police officers who go way beyond this right here. All right. We'll see you in the next one.